So today we're going to continue to talk about clustering analysis methods. We're going to introduce quite a number of different algorithms that represents different um, approach to clustering. Um, I'm not asking to memorize everything that we're going to um, discuss, but that the key idea is to be able to articulate distinctive features. But when you, when I gave you a name of an algorithm, you can tell me one or two major characteristic um, about this method that differentiate this one from other algorithms. So first one we're going to talk about is um, um, Birch and a Chameleon, and they are they can be categorized under hierarchical clustering. Um, there are also other features um, that make them interesting. So Birch is used when you have a very large data set that cannot be fit into memory. Um, with that kind of data, none of the previous um, methods that we discussed would work. Um, so Birch was designed for this purpose. Um, the idea is um, interesting, and it's not the first time that we see an idea like this. Um, so the idea is to actually create a tree structure, and this tree um, is called clustering feature tree. If you still recall in our um, association room mining, we learned about FP growth tree. Um, that tree holds all the information the data set has. And once the tree was created, everything else can be done using the tree in memory. So we don't have to go back to the disk and scan the database again. Um, this CF clustering feature tree achieve very similar purposes for clustering um, as, as the FP growth tree. So we have, so the idea is to grow this tree and using this tree to store some critical information that can be used in future clustering, um, but so that we don't have to go back to the database to collect information again once the tree is built. So this CF tree is in memory, holds essential information needed for, for the uh, clustering. And not only that, um, the CF tree at the leaf node, it holds many very, very small and very, very tight clusters. So this is a data reduction idea. Remember we talk about when you have large amount of data, you can make them clusters and then you can work on the clusters. And this is exactly that idea. We have this data is too many, so we, we, we build very tight clusters. Each cluster can be seen again as data points again for the second phase, where we just using, now as second phase two, everything is in memory. The CF tree is in memory. All the essential information is in memory. And all those small tight clusters are in memory. And, and then at this point, any other clustering algorithm we have discussed and we will be discussing, most of them would work. So at this time, you have more freedom to choose what methods to use. Because the CF um, features, the clustering features, is a set of summary statistics. Um, so there are some limitations. You cannot do, for example, single link um closest uh, distance or max link the the, the 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 most distant two points you cannot do those um clustering anymore but many other um clustering algorithm can be used um just based on this set of summary statistics this um birch has a very good efficiency um in terms of computational cost it scales linearly so it's a very um um, it's very um, it, it's key feature that um, a large data set clustering must have is the scalability. And Birch algorithm won 20, uh, 2004 test of time awards um, from the um, KDD conference. So it is a very cool algorithm. Uh, we talked about clustering features. What are they? They're very simple. 
um, they have just actually three data elements. Um, they have one, one clustering feature holds three pieces of data. The first one is the number of data points. The second one is the linear sum of the endpoints that's <coughs> in the data set. Um, so I, I added this um, um, to make it clear this second element is a vector. It's not a scalar. And the third um, element is square sum of the point. Um, so here I have example to show how to compute this. We have five points. Um, so therefore, five, the first element is five. And then we add them up um, um, to find the linear sum of them points. We have two dimensional data. Therefore, this is a two element vector. The set of value add up to 16 and this set of value add up to 30. Um, the last one is the square sum, which is basically the dot product of a point to itself. Um, so this is how we compute this and then we get the final um, uh, SS. So what's, what's good about those? This looks very simple. The good thing about those clustering features is they can be used to compute other essential values that needed for clustering. So for example, we can use those numbers to find the centroid. With centroid, you can do k-means right away. Um, the, you can compute the radius. The radius is the average distance of each point to the centroid. Um, this can be used to, to control the tightness of a cluster. If, if a, a very tight cluster or a small cluster with many points uh, will have a um, uh, very small radius. And you can actually compute the average link distance between clusters um, using this formula. And you can also compute a diameter. Diameter is pairwise distance, the average pairwise distance in a cluster. This is another way to control the tightness of a cluster. Um, not only that, you can see those, um, uh, those essential clustering features can be used to compute additional key piece of information that can be used um, for secondary finer um, clustering. Uh, not only that, um, CF itself is adaptive. That in order to find the CF for two small clusters, you simply add up the, the CF values of those two smaller clusters. So it makes the entire computation very efficient. Um, so the, the, the formulas I listed here has been, I verified those by hand and check multiple sources. Um, the formulas in the textbook are incorrect. Um, so just make a note about that. I have a uh, question. Yes. Can you go back to uh, previous slide, one slide back? Okay. So here, uh, these parameters N, L, S, and S, S, are calculated for each cluster, correct? Uh, we will get to there. Um, we the first at this time you will um, um, yeah, uh, yes, it's calculated for um, a cluster. How do you find the clusters? Exactly, that's the point that we're going to talk about next. Okay. Yeah, no worries. So how do we do that? Um, finding the clusters and build the tree. So we said this algorithm starts with building the CF tree structure. When this CF tree is built within memory, then the leaf nodes would represent a um, large number of small clusters. Each every those CF represents one cluster. So the three summary values there represents a small cluster, okay? Um, and in the non-leaf node, um, the CF of non-leaf node is basically the sum of all the leaf nodes. So you can see this is the, the cluster that covers all those smaller clusters. So from this tree, what we see is actually um, starting the, no the root node um, has multiple um, uh, larger clusters and each every cluster covers the entire cluster that's represented by this branch. And this one has its own branch, okay? And each internal load node will have um, smaller clusters that covers its 
branch of um, smaller tight clusters. So this is the, the thing that we're going to build. Um, we noted before that this CF is adaptive, that, that we simply, the summary of all those CFs is basically the sum of each individual CF. CF. So that can be easily computed. Um, this tree has three hyper, hyperparameters. Um, T is critical. It's the cluster diameter threshold for the leaf entries. This T controls how tight each every little clusters in the leaf node going to be. Um, and the B and L are, um, are the room that we have in the uh, internal node and in the leaf node, how many CFs we can hold um, at leaf node or at the um, non-leaf node, okay? So how do we build the tree? I'm going to show um, this slide first using one example. So I color coded this. Uh, we have this set of five um, values that we want to build into a tree. Um, so all those blue things were not covered, okay? So you don't have to look at those. So we start with three and four. At the very beginning, the root is empty. And we add three and four here, we compute the first CF. We call it CF1, okay? Um, so this is N is one and three, four um, is um, the, the mean distance, linear distance, and then the square distance. And second, we read in two, six, okay? Then we can we find the, the diameter. Can, if we add this to this cluster, well, the diameter of this cluster exists our threshold, which is a Manhattan distance of two. It turns out two and six. So we start with this and two six is here. Our block distance is three, so it's greater than two. Therefore, this one cannot go into CF one. It has to start another CF. So we did that, we put it here. And we read in the fourth one. Um, this fourth one, form five, is closer close to CF one. We can add it to CF one. We don't have to create a new one. So adding this again is very easy. Um, earlier we have one point. Now adding four and five, we have two points. And add four and five to these values, and add the sum the square. Um, square sum of four and five to 25, we got 66. So incremental is easy. Um, so we add four and five. Um, after four and five, we read in four and seven. Here, four and seven is greater than the diameter. It cannot be fit into any of those two. So we have to start a new one. Now the space in the root is all occupied. We have a new thing here. Again, it's, um, it cannot be absorbed by any of those um, CFs. It has to create a new CF for, for this one, but we don't have room here. Therefore, we will take this. Um, so this is one CF plus the original three. We have four CFs. We divide this four CFs into two groups, and we create a leaf node to host this original ones. Um, and the new one. This division is based on the distance. We find the two um, CFs that are furthest apart, which is this four C4 and I think CF3. And then we distribute the CF1 and CF2 to those two extremes. Um, that gives us a new new set of two clusters. So now we have um, leaf grow out of it and we have a room emptied and we have um, also room in the leaf nodes. When new data points coming in, again, we go through this um, tree structure. We go through this tree structure and find the right leaf node that's closest to this uh, incoming node. We can find that because we can use the centroid. So coming into this node, we compare this new um, observation to all the centroids represented by the CFs and find this one is closest. Okay, we follow this branch. 
and go to this non-leaf node and we compare our um, data points to the centroids of those clusters. And you, um, iteratively, recursively, we actually get to a point that we can actually, um, uh, we find uh, the leaf node that's closest to, to our incoming observation. And here we decide which of the CFs can absorb this new observation. If it can, perfect, add it in. If it cannot, well, add another CF. If we run out of room, again, we split, just like we did before, okay? So do we have questions on how to construct the tree? Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> yes. So what did you mean by saying that we run out of the room in the in the fourth row? Right. So here, remember, we have um, branching factor length of internal node, node length of leaf node. Um, those are the uh, parameters the user need to set. Um, this, because our idea is to build this tree in memory. So we need, one, we need each every node to be fit on a, a page size. So there has to be a limit in terms of how long this list can grow. So in this, in this example, we have set the threshold to be three. So there is only three CFs can be hold on the root. And now then, we, uh, huh? Okay, and then when it, when it became three, uh, so here it's three. So when it became four, you kind of split it to, into two groups, right? Why two? Right. Yes. Yes. So Why? this this threshold must be greater than two for sure. B and L has to be greater than two. So, so when you run out room, you have to split. Split means to create two branches. Mm -hmm. um, that would occupy your two spot in the root. Yeah, yeah, like you will have additional empty uh, room to host other things. Oh, okay. So let's say the maximum number instead of three, it was four. Okay. Uh huh. When we when we had to add the fifth one, we need to do the split, right? Because the maximum room is four, right? So here the maximum is three. Okay, I yeah. think if, if, for example, the maximum was four, mm -hmm. okay, if we had to, if we had to add the fifth one, yes, to do the split, and that a split should it be two or three? I mean, or it's a two, it's always a, two. Always when two. you split, it's always two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have another question. Mm -hmm. Um, could you go one slide back? If I add the data point four seven, how do I compute the diameter? Or to what do I compare that? Um, for, um, for, an so for, for the, the second point two six, I understand how I see that the uh, Manhattan distance is greater than two, but what's the Manhattan distance for, for what, for seven? Oh, okay, so, um, so the diameter, um, we compute, um, Four and seven is this dot. Yeah. Um, so we already have processed the previous dot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we compute this to the centroids of this. Ah, okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. And another question Is there a rule of thumb by how much the data set gets compressed? Or is it dependent on the data set? Uh, it depends on the, the dimensionality of data set. As you can tell, this room, this um, dimensionality determines how long this element is. Uh -huh. um, and also your parameters of uh, whatever, the B and Ls. Okay. Um, so you can, I, can, I think you can have a rough idea. Whatever that you have, you basically, you can have 10,000 right, mm -hmm. um, element saved in one CF. Mm -hmm. You only have this, no matter how many, let's say you have um, 100 dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, it, the compression rate is great. 
I, I don't okay. think I have read a number there, but it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. I have one more question. Sorry. Sure. Sure. How about the number of clusters? Do we should we choose the number of clusters? No, we don't. We the tightness is controlled by T. This is what you use to control basically in uh, uh, influence how many final clusters you're gonna get. Okay. I think this is an advantage because nobody knows how many clusters we the data has. Yeah, we okay. should let the data to tell the story. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um. So um, good thing about Birch, I think we have already mentioned, it's very efficient. Um, it can, um, different clustering algorithms can then be applied from the, on the tight clusters. Um, at this time, you actually have control. Um, the, the Birch, um, the original implementation of Birch has the outlier removal um, mechanism. Um, so you can actually, outlier removal also can be seen as a way to reduce um, data set. Uh, outliers have been removed on this thing, so it doesn't affect the secondary clustering steps. Um, so one of the heuristics that Birch algorithm used was to find subclusters, subclusters which means the clusters in the leaf node with data points, I'm sorry, less than less than a um, quarter of the average size of the all leaf um, subclusters. Those, those clusters are going to be um, removed um, as outliers. Um, so those are the good things. The bad things, bad things, it only works with numerical data, as you can see, computer means. Um, the insertion order of the observations could affect the CF tree. Um, if you have exactly the same two observations, depending on the order they're read into the CF tree, they can be put into different clusters. Um, so one way to address this issue to randomize, remove duplicates, and then randomize the observations to reduce this effect. Um, and also you can scan the database again and rerun um, the, the algorithm to correct some of those um, mis- placed points. Um, because the fixed size of the leaf nodes, um, the final clusters may not be very natural. Um, um, that this, this, uh, this um, uh, shortcoming can be um, uh, reduced by rescan database that I mentioned earlier. Um, because we use means, because those summary things are always kind of, um, you can use average, um, you can use um, the diameter and, and uh, uh, radius, the resulting clusters tend to be spherical um, in shape. Okay, I think those should be clear. I had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so the reason we randomize and not sort in order, is it because when we want to test it or a new sample comes in, that's not going to be in, in order? Is that the reason we? No, um, we cannot order the observation. I mean, in which, in which way we can order the observation? I was just thinking in terms of like increasing order of distance or like, I, I, I don't know. Like from yeah, that's right. The, the idea is um, this CF tree is most severely, um, most severely affected when you have um, skewered um, data set. The, the tree meant to be a, a height balanced tree. Um, the, when you have skewered data set, then those observations could actually determine uh, the, the order will have a greater effect on the final trees. So we want to randomize um, observations so that um, to alleviate um, some of the skewerness. Um, but uh, this, um, even taking those steps, it will not remove um, those issues. Um, so CF tree do, the algorithm gave you Mm, additional scanning opportunities to correct those. Um, but it's just additional one or two times of scanning. 
it will still uh, make the algorithm uh, quite efficient. A little bit costly than scanning once, but um, in general, um, well, the fact that it has won um, test of time award um, means that it has been shown in practice works very well um, for a large, for a large, huge uh, data sets. 